All right, we just finished up a, a great uh, Republican roundup here in Bee County, Representative Lozano. You're the 102nd now yes. member of the Republican Caucus of the Texas Legislature. Welcome to the Republican Party. Thank you so and, much. And uh, having grown up in South Texas as a Republican when there aren't, weren't very many, I, yeah. I can appreciate you making that change. Yes, That's sir. a big step. Tell, yes, us, tell us what you're doing, what's important here for your district. You're running now for, rep, for District 43. Yes. And yes. where is that and, and what's going yes, on? Yes, sir. So basically, District 43 is Jim Wells County, Clayburgh County, San Patricio County, and Bee County. Um, I grew up in Jim Wells County, uh, attended schools there K through 12. My parents still live there in the same house. And uh, my wife and I, after finishing graduate school, I, I got my degree in business. Uh, we moved to Kingsville and we opened Wingstop franchises. Mm -hmm. I was always eating there in college. and I love Wingstop, by the way. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Pro a professor in, in, in business school and graduate school told me, if you're going to sell a product, you have to willingly consume it. And I love wings. <laughs> uh, but I did that because I've always wanted to be in the legislature since I was 14 years old. And I saw that there were very few business people there. And uh, my father's a family doctor. Uh, he literally made house calls in the 80s, and I would go with him. Um, I traveled every farm road in Jim Wells County, Clever County, and, and now I'm traveling every farm road in B and, and San Pat. And talk about communities of interest. I mean, this last session I served on the Energy Resources Committee, which oversees the oil and gas industry in Texas and the Railroad Commission. And I served on the Agriculture and Livestock Committee. So uh, every county that we have, those are the issues. Uh, that's what I grew up seeing. Where I grew up, we either went to high school, we either went to college, or we went to work on the rigs or in ag, in agriculture. And um, today with the Eagleford Shale, which is the lifeline now for our economy in Texas. I mean, the whole reason we have a rainy day fund is because of the oil and gas severance right. taxes. Um, and so uh, it's it's an incredible boom for the for the state of Texas. We're leading other states in the rate of growth in the economy. When other states had uh, recessions, Texas was still holding strong. Uh, we have a balanced budget at the state level. Something would be nice in Washington. Right. Um, and so this whole process for me has been uh, obviously a blessing. The one thing I always did when I got elected was I made sure that I always voted my district so I have a 100% voting record pro-life, endorsed by Texas Texas Alliance for Life, uh, uh, endorsed by the Texas Oil and Gas Association. I stood up to the Sierra Club who was trying to shut down our oil and gas field because of a, a salamander. Uh, I mean, things, I'm pro-jobs, not pro-lizards. Right. That's what I told them and they left my office. <laughs> uh, but, you know, most importantly, I, I, I represented my upbringing, my culture, my values, that's who we are in South Texas. And my job from now until the day I die is to make sure that more people in South Texas realize that we are conservative and we are Republican. And that uh, the Democratic Party is no longer the party of Texas Democrats, it's the party of San Francisco. They're totally out of touch now with, with the state of Texas. Uh, and uh, I intend to continue to make inroads in South Texas expand the Republican base, uh, and ensure that f for decades to come, Texas stays red. Well, for the last four years, the Democrat Party has really declared war on Texas, especially economically. Mm -hmm. And so we're glad to see you changing mm -hmm. over. We're seeing a big shift of, of demographics in South Texas now, more and more people realizing they are conservative, which yeah. the, they already knew they were conservative, but re yeah. realizing that the Democrat Party doesn't represent those conservative values. Mm -hmm. And how are you working on reaching out to other Hispanics to yeah. spread the word about that and, and let them know why you made the change? Yeah. You know, what? when I ran last time, I was saying the same things that I'm saying now. And I was saying things like this in all Spanish-speaking adult daycare centers in South Texas. These are straight party Democrat voters because that's what they've always done. And they were, and I was talking to them about the need to reform welfare, uh, the need to drug test people that are receiving Lone Star, the need to attach an amendment that TEA has to check the attendance of the children of the households where they're receiving Lone Star so that they take their kids to school. That's the whole purpose of, of welfare is so that single mothers can raise their kids. And we've heard from truancy officers that that's not the case. And so when the elderly people that only speak Spanish, and these are the daycare centers, tell me that they only get $9 a month in Lone Star, but their neighbor gets 1000 and they have a brand new SUV with $3,000 rims on it, mm -hmm. I can see that they obviously have a problem with the fraud, 
and that they'll support reforms, which are Republican positions. They complain about their electric bill, and the reason it's high is because of all these subsidies to solar and wind. And when, when the, the energy companies are forced to buy electricity from these subsidized uh, renewable energy sources, it raises their electric bill. And I tell them that, and they can't believe that. It's like, is that why? Um, I can go, oh, the issue of life is huge. I mean, when we tell them that the Democratic Party, oh, well, at that time I was just telling them that I'm going to fight any attempts to, to make it easier or to lead to more abortions in Texas. I'm going to fight that. And they're strongly about that. Uh, and so now I'm doubling back. And, I, and they've read in the paper that I'm a Republican. And I'm doubling back. And I'll tell you, they're going to vote for me in November. And they're going to vote for me because a lot of them have known me since I was five years old. But a lot of them have seen a tremendous transition in the, in the Democratic Party that they once started in. It's no longer the same party for that. You know, they often say that if John Kennedy was a, uh, alive today, he'd be a Republican today. Um, and that's, that's resonating in, in South Texas. And, and uh, you're seeing that demographic shift, especially in this area where oil and gas is vital. And you have the EPA regional administrator from Dallas, Al Armandadis, saying that he wants to crucify oil and gas. Right. You're crucifying yeah. us in South Texas when you do that. And so, he, actually I have a story about that. Our first energy resources hearing we had, I was, uh, my first hearing, I'm a freshman. They called his name. He was supposed to testify, he wasn't there. I actually have the audio on my phone, I, I saved it. Uh, I, asked the, I asked the chairman if, if I could make a, a statement on the record, and I, I ripped into the EPA. I said, this is an insult to Texans, that the state that leads the country in oil and gas exploration and the potential to be uh, no longer dependent on foreign sources of oil, yet he can't drive two hours from Dallas to Austin. And so fast forward to two weeks ago or a week ago when he made that ridiculous comment, and it shows how the EPA is just bent on destroying Texas. And that's, that's the Democratic Party. We went to get a hotel room here tonight in Beeville, and uh -huh. it was $140 for a yeah. little, little drive-in motel. <laughs> now, that, that's because of the economic boom yeah. down here that's going on because of the Eagleford Shale Project. Explain the, to our, our readers at Texas yeah. GOP Vote, what has been the impact in the local communities of this, yeah. with the jobs that are being created? You know, the Eagleford could be four hours away, but cities four hours away are booming because people are driving to the Eagleford to work two weeks on, two weeks off. Mm -hmm and they're going back with a tremendous paycheck. So in Alice, Texas, for example, I have a, I have a wing stop. Uh, the Chili's across the street, the movie theater, uh, it, sales have doubled from, from this time pre-Eagleford Shale. And uh, the, the economic impact is incredible and it's gonna be sustained with increased technology. And if we need to fight the efforts of, of Democratic Party to, to shut that down and but here in Bebo I mean it's supply and demand so when you have a <laughs> very few hotel rooms price is gonna go up and everybody wants wants to to to, to lock up hotel rooms they're they're getting these oil companies are getting block blocks of rooms just holding them they're not pe people aren't staying there every night just they're just holding them for their workers <laughs> if they want to sleep somewhere so they can keep the rate yeah. down at a reasonable level. Yeah. It was amazing to, to come to Beeville, Texas, town of 14,000 yeah. people and see a $120 roadside motel room. So that, yeah. that was pretty impressive. And yeah. it's, Senator Hager had told me quite a bit about what was yeah. going on down here and the impact it was having. And it really is a, a great thing for the people of South Texas. Absolutely. But it's great for the Texas revenue mm -hmm. system as well. Yeah. You know, counties like this, like Bee County, Jim Wells County, Claver County, the county's budgets, 30, 40 percent of the county's budgets are from oil and gas service taxes. So it's this kind of exploration that allows counties to expand their infrastructure, to, to create more programs for their county, for their for their constituents. Uh, when you're that big part of a budget, and, and the school districts benefit tremendously from it. Well, welcome to the Republican Thank Party. Thank you so much, I'm Glad Bob. to have you it's there. It's a pleasure. Keep spreading the good word Thank for, you for, for all of us. And, Thank uh, you for having Texas GOP vote, because it's, it's huge for Obviously, getting the word out, but also expanding uh, beyond. And, and obviously, with, with the kind of media that we have today, you can go beyond and reach areas that before you could. Well, we're glad to have you, and we'll we'll talk to you some more as we get closer to election day. Yes, sir.